wacko, freak, child molester. You change your skin from black to white. You're a weirdo. In his lifetime, Michael Jackson was labeled everything imaginable. But maybe he wasn't as weird as we thought, but a perfectly normal customer of services in Hollywood. Services on offer to every A-list star, private eyes, gangsters, mystics and cults, who become your new family and make big problems go away at a price. The Hollywood underbelly stinks. It reeks. They come with fangs like werewolves, you know, like vampires. Everyone in Michael Jackson's life was out to use him. Michael Jackson's secret Hollywood holds the secret to who Jackson really was. The product of a system that created him, fed on him, and ultimately destroyed him. Michael Jackson is about to sign to a new Hollywood agent. The most powerful man in town, with a client list unlike any other. Mark Rosler doesn't need Swish LA offices to impress his clients, because they're all dead. Good morning. Hello. Is that Mark? I imagine. Nice to meet you. So these are all okay. the pictures you've got of all your clients on the wall. This is a Marilyn Merlot wine. Wow. And you can pour it in your Marilyn Merlot Andy Warhol wine glass. Mark pioneered the Dead Celebrity Agency that makes millions of dollars every year putting his clients' names and faces on everything imaginable. This is good. What's this? A Maryland purse. We've done hundreds of Maryland purses over the years. Those sold for uh, about $1,000 when they were made. Elvis cellophane right here. Mark signed dead Elvis in the 80s, when Elvis's career was at a low point, and never looked back. A musical hound dog of Elvis, probably worth quite a bit of money today. Last year, Elvis earned $60 million. What about Michael Jackson? Well, I would rather not publicly comment on any discussions I've had with uh, the Jackson estate, but obviously with who we are and what services we offer, there have been different discussions with different people. Do you think you might not be slightly cheapening the memory of these people by producing a, a, a doll like that? Well, I don't think so. She just looks a bit deranged there, doesn't she, with her hair? Well, I think that uh, the hair is probably such that you could move it however you want it. <laughs> Here in Forever Hollywood Cemetery, forgotten stars await their turn to be resurrected. In life, Michael Jackson seemed an unsolvable puzzle. But in death, perhaps that puzzle can be deciphered for the first time. I genuinely thought that Jackson would be remembered for what happened in the last 10 years of his life. On his gravestone would be written, Michael Jackson, accused of child abuse, lies here. But no one would remember the other stuff. But in death, he's remembered as the genius, you know, who did the moonwalk. That's kind of appropriate because Hollywood requires a happy ending. It requires the script to go according to plan. Jackson died in Hollywood, but he was created and destroyed by Hollywood too. It began in 1969, when the Jackson family moved from the Midwest and appeared on the Dick Clark Show. How long have you been Three years. Here, a 10-year-old Michael was asked about his first impressions of Hollywood. I would like to find out the difference between Gary, Indiana, and living in Los Angeles. You moved here now? Yes, well, uh, it's pretty sunny out here. I like it a little bit better. Do you dig it? Yeah, it's cold in Indiana. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you agree? 
The Jackson Five. This interview captured Michael's innocence upon arriving in town, oblivious to what his Hollywood future held. In 1970, Michael Jackson enrolled at California Prep, an exclusive private school with just 90 pupils for kids of the Hollywood elite. The Brandos, the Sonny and Shares, and now the Jacksons. Sitting next to Michael at school was child star Danny Bonaducci. He's agreed to talk to me about the Hollywood that created Jackson and produced as many casualties as stars. today is almost unrecognizable from his former character, the 10-year-old dorky ginger kid in American sitcom The Partridge Family. They were America's first musical family, whose records even outsold the Jackson Five. You look a lot different in person than you do on your albums. Oh? Sure. This is my actual yearbook picture, also in the bees. There's Christian Brando, who is no longer with us. But there's Michael, Michael Jackson. There's Michael. You, you had a class of three, and that was you guys. Yeah, that was the entire 12th grade at Cal Prep. It was me, Christian Brando, and Michael Jackson. But I went to school with, with all the Jacksons, because it went from 7th to 12th grade. And they were a wonderful family. Some of them had their quirks, but some of them did not at all. Michael couldn't have been a more normal guy. But it was a far from normal time. Sitting on the hillside, watching all the people die. I feel much better on the other. Danny and Michael's school days were overshadowed by the brutal murder of an actress high up in the Hollywood Hills. How does uh, an actress as beautiful as you are, how do you feel about doing nude scenes? If it's a real scene and it's an honest scene, and if it's something where you're stripped naked that you would be doing naturally. Five persons, including actress Sharon Tate, were found dead at the home of Miss Tate. Eight Never months pregnant, Sharon Tate was one of nine people murdered by followers of Charles Manson, a failed rock star. A month-long killing spree sent Hollywood into a spiral of paranoia. It sucked in the kids of Cal Prep. It permeated fear through the community of Hollywood that famous people were now targets. They're being targeted. At the time, we had a lot of people talking into their wrists about things being okay. The CIA was there all the time. Secret Service was there all the time. It was a very odd moment. Stars like the Jackson family retreated to their high-security compounds in the hills, where they hid from the next Charles Manson. Growing up famous in post-Manson Hollywood had a profound effect on Michael Jackson's graduating class of 76. Marlon Brando's son, Christian, became a convicted killer. Chastity Bono, Cher's daughter, became a man. And Bonaducci became a junkie, eventually living in his car when the Partridge family was axed. But Michael had left his classmates behind, plotting a bright new future away from his family and the Jackson Five. Jackson's friend and attorney, Brian Oxman, was with Michael throughout his career, and Michael would confide in him until the very end. He wanted to break away from the influence of his family. He wanted his freedom. He wanted to be the maestro who conducted his entertainment, performance, life. He was to be boss, and he didn't want anybody else to tell him what to do. Even though Michael Jackson was clearly the star attraction of the Jackson Five, with fans mobbing him, he still played along as part of the group. Although in this post-concert interview, Michael revealed a steely determination to break free. 
And the idea of being separated from them, does that hurt? No, it doesn't. It's wonderful. I feel like I'm accomplishing what I'm supposed to do. And you don't feel guilty or worried about your brothers? No. <laughs> Michael left his family behind, and his first solo album, Off the Wall, sold 20 million copies. In the vacuum left behind by his family, Hollywood's A-list services would now step in to support him. He was on top of the world, but one day Jackson bumped into someone from his past and got a glimpse into his own future. And I'm standing, and this limousine comes to a screeching halt. The window goes down, it's Michael Jackson. And he looks at me and he goes, Danny, how are you? And I went, I'm great, Michael, how are you? And you can see I was a train wreck. He knew I wasn't okay. He went, well, you, you look good, it's really good to see you. And I said, you too, Michael, congratulations on all the success. I'm the biggest star in the world. And he waved as he walked down the street. And I watched the limousine go by to the biggest star in the world who had the exact same breaks I did. You know, he had the exact same life I did. And I thought, how, you know, how did that not end up being me? Why is it him instead of me? And I'd like to say that's when I went home and sobered right up. Well, it took about five seconds for me to go, that sucks, and I crossed right across the street and bought the drugs. Hollywood caters for two worlds, stardom and self-destruction. What Jackson didn't realize was that he was about to cross from his world into Danny's. With Hollywood, his new family, there to hold his hand every step of the way. Yeah. 